Cult heroes are an interesting phenomenon in football. They are not quite legends, but they have a huge impact on a team for a specific period of time, and live long in the memory of fans who witness their performances. Divock Origi is a great example of this. During his time at Liverpool, he scored 45 goals in 175 games. Not particularly impressive for a striker who costs such a hefty fee. But a lot of those goals came on the biggest stages, when the Reds needed him the most, with his most famous moment coming in the 2018-19 UCL semifinals against Barcelona, where he scored two goals in a 4-0 comeback win over Barcelona in the second leg to advance Liverpool to the finals, and scoring in the finals to win the Champions League for the Reds. However, in British football during the 90s, a foreign player left his mark on almost every club he played for, despite his short spells. He was a key player that established United as the dominant force in the Premier League, helping Everton to one of its highest league finishes in the Prem, and was a standout performer in a Rangers team that was so dominant in the Scottish game. He won everything in England and Scotland even being voted the Sir Matt Busby Player of the Year ahead of Cantona, Giggs, Beckham, and Scholes. Almost every coach he played under described him as a great professional. Claudio Ranieri even called him the best player in the world and has the ability to do things like this. Denny Sirwin with the corner. It's run through to Kanchelski! Sharp again. On the back post is Kanchelski. That is a... ...with that corner. Floated high again. Alistair's up there. Kanchelski's driving it through! I might have spoiled it there, but I'm talking about Andre Kanchelskis. And if you don't know about him, get ready, because his story is quite incredible. Kanchelskis was born in Kirovorad, in the Soviet Union's Ukrainian Soviet Socialist Republic, to a Lithuanian father and a Ukrainian mother. He began his career with his hometown club, Zirka, Kirovarad in the Soviet second division, where he racked up some 68 appearances, scoring five goals and earning a call-up to the Soviet Union U21 team, where he won the 1990 European Under-21 Championship, scoring a goal in the second leg of the final against Yugoslavia. In 1988, he was signed on a free transfer to Dynamo Kiev in the Soviet top league. He was coached by the legendary Valery Lobanovsky, who he believes is the best manager he played for. That is some praise considering Sir Alex Ferguson managed him. Lobanovsky favored a 4-4-2 formation, a system that focused on playing long balls, playing the ball out wide, and crossing it into the penalty box where a striker could have a chance to score. Under his manager, Kanchelskis would perform the role of a traditional English-style winger in a 4-4-2 formation, looking to receive the ball out wide and crossing it into the box from the touchline. He then moved to Shakhtar Donetsk and spent two seasons there, impressing with his style of play and getting signed by Manchester United for £650,000, which was a lot of money back then. Now in the Premier League, foreign players and managers dominate. However, during the late 80s and early 90s, it was extremely rare to have a foreign player in your squad. And by foreign, I don't mean Irish, Scottish, or Welsh. I mean outside the UK and the British Isles. The Russian was one of just 11 foreign players playing in England. This would have made it difficult for any player outside the UK to settle in and learn the language, the playing style, and the culture. Ferguson discovered Kinchelskis, get this, through a VHS tape sent to him playing for the Russian U21s by an agent. Despite this, Ferguson said it was a justifiable risk. He made his United debut in the penultimate league game of the 1990-91 season in a 3-0 loss to Crystal Palace at Selhurst Park, with Ferguson resting several first-team players due to their participation in the European Cup Winners' Cup Final. It was not until the opening game of the 1991-92 season, however, that Kanchelskis established himself in the first team. He also won the 1991 European Super Cup with United, defeating European Cup winners Red Star Belgrade 1-0. Sir Alex Ferguson described the Russians' debut season as an outstanding success, 
as he made 34 first division appearances, scoring 5 goals as well as 8 goals in 42 appearances. United would finish second to Leeds United in the title race. However, compensation for Kinchelskis and his teammates had come at Wembley Stadium in a 1-0 win over Nottingham Forest, which gave them their first ever Football League Cup triumph. On the opening day of the new Premiership season in 1992, Kinchelskis primarily played on the right wing. Such was the fluidity of United's attacking play that he could switch wings and be just as effective as a left winger. Against defending champions Leeds early in the season, opposite winger Ryan Giggs delivered a ball from the right to Kinchelskis, drifting in from the left wing to the back post, heading it into the goal to score United's first in a 2-0 win. He would go on to score three goals and get two assists in 27 Premier League games. Besides the stats, Kinchelskis was just a menace for United. It was his hard work, pace, acceleration, and explosivity that made him a key player at Old Trafford. His ability to run at defenders with ease, put opponents under pressure, and create space for teammates when dribbling with the ball was a key attribute of his time playing for the Red Devils. United would end up winning the title in the 1992-93 season with 84 points. He followed that up by helping the Red Devils win a domestic treble, playing a key role in United's Premier League, FA Cup, and FA Community Shield victories, scoring 10 and assisting 7 in 47 games. Every season, he was getting progressively better. However, it would be the 1994-95 season that he would put up the best numbers of his career. In the 1994-95 season, Kinchelskis would show his shooting ability and eye for goal as he would score a whopping 15 goals and 5 assists in 39 games. He would be Manchester United's second highest goal scorer, winning another charity shield and winning the Sir Matt Busby Player of the Year award. And how could you forget his hat trick against Manchester City? and his brace against Premier League champions Blackburn Rovers. made it even more impressive by the role he played. Let me explain. I mentioned the term English style winger earlier in the video, since that was the Russian's primary position. But what is that exactly, and why is it important for the context of this video? Well, British football in the 90s was dominated by the 4-4-2 formation, with traditional English wingers being one of its signature roles. These players were tasked with providing width for the system and would support the defense by tracking back. Additionally, they were also tasked with progressing the ball out wide, getting past the opponent's fullback, and crossing the ball into the box for someone to pounce on that chance. They were not often that prolific, mostly focusing on chance creation rather than scoring goals. For instance, Ryan Giggs only scored 17 goals in his most prolific season whereas a modern winger like Mohamed Salah averages around 30 goals a season in all competitions, being tasked with cutting inside, leading attacks, and being the primary goal scorer for his team. I'm not saying Salah is better than Giggs. They just fulfill different roles for their respective teams in their respective eras. Anyways, back on topic. In the 1955-56 season, Kinchelskis confirmed that he would be leaving United, blaming Ferguson for his departure and eventually agreeing to join Everton in August despite a long transfer saga and multiple allegations of fake Asians and other controversies that would lead to murder, which would make for an interesting video on its own. Everton paid a club record £5 million fee for Kinchelskis, signing a four-year contract worth £13,000 a week. 
His first season with the club saw him score 16 goals, including 10 goals in his last 10 matches. These excellent performances made him arguably the best right winger in the country, with 15 coming in the league. In the Premier League, his 15 goals made him Everton's joint top goal scorer. He would lead Everton to a massive 6th place finish. He would score a brace against bitter rivals Liverpool. And a hat trick against Sheffield Wednesday. He would have another decent season at Goodison Park before moving to Fiorentina for 16 million euro, which made him the most expensive Russian player at the time. He would have an unremarkable and injury riddled couple of seasons in Florence, being the target of many vicious challenges by defenders. He scored two goals in just 28 games. The manager, Alberto Malassani, was replaced by Giovanni Trapattoni, who didn't see Kinchelskis as part of his plans, and was sold to Scottish Giants Rangers in 1998 for £5.5 million, a national record. His first goal for Rangers came in the first leg of their UEFA Cup qualification second round match against Greek side PAOK. Konchelskis would make massive contributions to Rangers' hunt for the league title. He would make 14 goal contributions in 31 league games, playing as a right winger in Dick Advocat's 4-3-3 formation. Rangers went on to win a domestic treble winning the Scottish Premiership, Scottish Cup, and Scottish League Cup, with Konchelskis coming on as a substitute and scoring as they clinched the third trophy against Glasgow rivals Celtic. This made and still makes him the only player to have scored in a Manchester, Merseyside, and Old Firm derby. In his second season at Ibrox, he was dropped from the team but regained his place in the new year. He would score five goals in 38 games, winning a league and cup double. In the 2000-2001 season at Rangers, despite winning a Scottish League Cup, his relationship with Advocat eventually broke down, and after a trading ground fight with teammate Fernando Rickson, and refusing to play in a match for the Rangers under-21 team, he was eventually loaned out to Manchester City in January 2001, playing 11 games for City, scoring once in a 4-2 defeat to Liverpool in the FA Cup. This also makes him one of the few players to play for both Manchester United and Manchester City. Also, see if you can name the rest of the players in the comment section. Upon his return to Rangers, he said that he was happy to be back and vowed to give his all for the team. But having received little game time and falling behind Russell Lapity in the pecking order, he began to consider his future. In his final season, he would put up some par numbers, getting three goal contributions in 10 games, and was released from Rangers upon the expiration of his contract. Moves to Southampton, Al Halau, Dynamo Moscow, Saturn Romanskoye, and Krylia Sovatov followed, eventually retiring in 2006. The career of Andrei Kinchelskis consists of more highs and lows than most players, from falling out with managers and having disappointing spells at several clubs, to winning league titles with Britain's most elite clubs. The Russian's wizardry made a massive impact on British football, leading Everton to a top six finish and contributing to Rangers' domestic dominance over the Scottish game. However, I think the Russian's biggest impact was at Old Trafford, where he played a key role in transforming the Red Devils from a sleeping giant in mid-table to an all-conquering force in English football. Since his stay in Old Trafford, United has won numerous league titles and cup competitions, along with two Champions Leagues. This might be a bit of a hot take, but whether this would have been possible without the magic of Kinchelskis and also Eric Cantona is unsure. In my opinion, if the Russian stayed longer at Old Trafford and kept up his early to mid-90s form, I think he would be immortalized as a club legend and a Premier League great. Regardless, I think the cult hero status 
is more than worthy enough. And that is the end of the video. Please feel free to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.